Welcome to episode five of The Rig Report. If you could help us out by smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notifier so you know when the latest episodes will be released, that would be great. My name is Scott Schweitzer. I am your host this week, and I can't wait to share all of this information with you. On today's episode, we have special guest Cheryl Nasso speaking on the importance of nutrition during the quarterfinals. We have Matt Poulin, who came in second in this year's Open, and he explains why, even though a lot of people are saying that the Open is not important, it is important to him and a lot of other athletes. We also have our friends from Fantasy Fitnessing with us sharing their new quarterfinals box game. And Kat Shear is back with another rant. First up, we have Cheryl Nasso talking to us about the quarterfinals and the demand on the body and why it's super important to fuel yourself correctly during this weekend. What's up, guys? Coach Cheryl here from Fit Body Secrets. And I want to start by saying congratulations to all of you guys that just finished up the 2022 CrossFit Games Open Qualifiers. And congratulations to those of you guys out there that are moving on to the next stage, which is the quarterfinals. And whether you are going to be doing the workouts to play along or you're doing them because you want to go ahead and try and make it to the next stages. My goal today is to give you guys a few action steps that you guys can be taking because now is the time that nutrition actually really does matter and can really help you guys optimize your ability to perform this coming weekend. In the open stages, nutrition is a good thing to prioritize, but it honestly is more about an optimization thing, not necessarily a real performance enhancement. Um, Because for a lot of people, the workout for the open is done kind of primarily in the class setting, and it's, it's a one and done, or maybe it's a one and a repeat. But the volume is typically not much different than you're going to see on a typical day. Uh, The intensity might be greater and your effort's obviously going to be a lot higher, but the overall volume isn't there. So the idea of nutrition related to the open is more about just recovering and being able to get back on track with your normal training. Um, Whereas with the quarterfinals, it's a whole nother animal. Guys, this is kind of like a virtual regionals. If you guys can remember regionals back in the day, You guys are going to be doing one to six events, and I'm going to say probably closer to six events over the course of the next three days, or over the course of three days, this coming weekend. And whether it's this weekend or the team or the age group or whatever it is, nutrition is going to really help you guys make sure that you guys are going to be able to perform your best. And I'm going to start by just giving you guys today a few tips, because I honestly will tell you that I'm going to start from the, the most important tip is that I don't want you guys to think that now is a time to change everything that you've already been doing in your training and your nutrition as of right now, because you never change anything on game day. So whatever you're currently eating, whatever your current routine is, I want to keep those same foods. My goal this week is to make sure that you guys are getting enough of them and giving you guys a couple of quick strategies that will help you guys make sure that this weekend, Things are the way that they should be to help you guys recover your best, being able to perform those multiple events in a row. So number one tip, as I already said, is don't change anything drastically. So this is not the time to experiment with new supplements. What about trying creatine or beta alanine? What about this pre-workout? What about this other? Don't start doing all that crazy rabbit hole stuff. In fact, I would honestly not even add a bunch of different foods this week. I would stick to the things that you know work best. And then my tip number two, adding on to that is going to be to make sure that you're getting enough calories, not just on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, guys, your pre-training, your pre-workout meals start on Monday. So if you're from the endurance community, you will understand the importance of carb loading for those endurance events, whether it's necessary or not, doesn't matter. Our goal is optimization. So from Monday through Friday, You guys should be thinking about getting in enough calories, enough protein, and especially enough carbohydrates to make sure that going into this weekend, your glycogen stores are tapped off and you are ready for whatever the CrossFit Games decides to throw at you this weekend. So make sure that you're getting enough calories in. If you are currently working in a fat loss phase and you just qualified for quarterfinals, it is very important for you guys to understand that right now, Those are two very conflicting goals because on one end, you're in a calorie deficit because you want to lose body fat. And the other end, your body is saying, hey, I want to perform my best, which means I need stored energy. So this is a good week for you to say right now, my main priority is optimizing myself where I'm at for this weekend. So 
tapping off glycogen stores, which might put the weight up a couple of pounds on the scale because of the extra, extra uh, glycogen stores. That is a good thing. Okay. This is why a lot of times in the CrossFit games, athletes look to hopefully make sure that they're actually gaining weight throughout the weekend or at least staying the same way. They don't want to be losing glycogen. They want to be fueling glycogen or they want to be, they want to be optimizing their glycogen stores. So number two, you're getting in enough calories, enough carbohydrates leading up into the weekend. Number three is when you find out what the workouts are. It is very important for you to take your workout times seriously. Okay. Athletes prioritize and they are very selfish about what time they're going to work out because their pre and post workout nutrition needs to be in line with that. And knowing when you're going to perform the workouts that require more glycogen and the ones that you need to be more fueled or fed for, for your brain, uh, things that are super central nervous system taxing are very important for you guys. So actually take the time when you get the workouts to decide what time am I going to be doing these workouts? Now, as I said, if you've made it to the quarterfinals, chances are you've got a good amount of experience about what works best for you in the pre and post workout state in terms of foods. Now is the time to say, how do I feel best performing those movements? So if I had a big bowl of oatmeal and 30 minutes later, I'm going to go do burpees, I might not feel my best. Vice versa, waking up first thing in the morning and having coffee and going to the gym and trying to hit a PR front squat is likely not going to fuel me my best. I know that I work better fed when I'm lifting heavier and I actually like being a little bit lighter when I'm doing the cardio stuff. So know what works best for you. And that's the pre-workout stage. Because remember, your pre-workout is really just there to optimize your blood sugar, make sure you're in a good zone. You're already going to be fueled from all the fuel you've been eating leading up to that. The second piece of this though, which is very important, is your post-workout. I, and I will put this in the, I'll make sure this is put in the notes, is that I use the first form products. I use the formula one plus ignition. It is carbs and protein. I don't have to think about it. I get it in my body and then I can go ahead and eat a regular meal. And I know that I'm optimizing my body's glycogen recovery and I'm getting in enough protein to refuel those, uh, to get myself refueling and honestly getting my muscles recovering a little bit from the stress of whatever I did. Post-workout matters, okay? So making sure that you're getting in those calories post-workout, I would honestly recommend if you can take in a little bit of a break, maybe it's a couple of hours, take a nap, eat another meal before you hit your second workout of the day. And then the same thing matters. That post-workout matters because that post-workout and then that dinner meal are going to be getting you guys ready for the next day. So the last tip that I'm going to leave you with is that I want you guys to think about this weekend is you can't get enough. The only way you know you're getting too much is if you're starting to feel like you're crappy. You don't feel good. You feel heavy and all that kind of stuff. The goal is low density, or I'm sorry, high density, lower fiber foods, making you feel like you're not going to be super heavy in the belly, but it's just giving you those calories. It's giving you those carbohydrates. And then you're able to really hit those workouts with intensity, knowing you have a lot of fuel on board. So few tips today, and I will be giving some more, but I want to kind of keep this one short for you guys, because at the end of the day, the number one thing is too much is too much. Keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. So three simple things. Start fueling yourself on Monday for what you're going to be doing on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Number two is you're not changing anything in your term, your current routine. You're sticking to the foods that feel good to you. You're making sure that you're optimizing your ability to perform this weekend by knowing what works best for you right now. And then number three is that you are always making sure that in every post-workout situation, you're taking in some carbs and protein. The last thing that I want to leave you guys with is going into next week, which is going to be the recovery phase. So whether you're doing the quarterfinals for fun and you're giving it everything you got without any expectations and you are done with your season at the end of this weekend, or you hit the quarterfinals and you actually qualify for the next stages, your goal next week should look very similar to this week, but it's for the reverse reason. So whereas this week we are looking to optimize for performance, next week we're going to be looking to optimize for recovery because our goal is to make sure that we're giving your body enough energy to recover mentally and physically to prevent any injuries, any lingering fatigue, any of that stuff so that you guys can get back on track with your training and get back into hitting some new PRs. So that's it, guys. Good luck at the quarterfinals. I hope this was helpful for you all. Have a great week and go get it. Thank you so much, Cheryl. That's important news and we need to know that going into this weekend. Next up, we have Matt Poulin, second place finisher in this year's Open, and he explains to us why the Open is important to him. You go into the Open and 
your lowest finish was 11th. Yeah. Also, I think surprised myself a little bit with all this as well. And I think I even surprised, I, I think I surprised, I continued to surprise quite a bit of people, I'd say. Um, so I sit down and talk to my wife. And obviously, right, disclosure, this is unofficial yet. I don't know what happens when they're going to check our videos, but I feel pretty confident that I did everything correct. Um, but I was telling my wife, like, man, it's, Right, you're hearing all this talk about people saying the open doesn't matter, the open doesn't matter. And, like, yes, I get that argument. But also, for some of us who aren't already the superstars in the sports, I don't have this recognition notoriety, like, this does matter for us because this is just an opportunity for us to show people who we are and what we can do. Um, but that being said, I still think we finished quite a bit better than we were expecting. Um, and so I was telling my wife, like, man, it's crazy that, like, as we're going through each week, like I remember telling myself even last year's open or even my first two opens that like, man, I, my first two opens, I finished like 75th in the world on like both of them. And I'm like, what? Well, yeah, that's pretty dang good. But I would still remember telling myself like the, the distance between my scores and then the guys at the very top were like, how can you physically, how, many, how can you humanly pop and do that? Like, phys- how can you physically do that? Like, it was, it was such a huge leap. And I would just tell myself, right, after those those past three years of, like, man, I hit this as hard as I could. Like, how are these guys doing it, like, two minutes faster than me? That is crazy to go into this year. And I'm like, oh, I'm, like, one of those people that's doing it a few minutes faster than a lot of people. Like, it's kind of was – I don't know. It was kind of – it was a cool feel, surreal feeling. You're like, oh, I, I kind of – I am the person that, like, I was telling myself a year ago, like, how the heck do you do that? Um and like I think as the weeks went on and like the leaderboards kind of stood, we were like kind of I surprised myself. I think I honestly, Coach L will tell you I think he was pretty surprised too. Um, he wasn't expecting this, and um, yeah, I don't know. It was it's like I'm still here. It's pretty crazy. Um, that that happened so close to even being at the very top. Thought, thought so, but Saxon over here edging me out by a few seconds. That's all it takes. It's crazy. Yeah, um, and that that's like that's a great performance for him. He's never been an open competitor, so you know maybe it's important for him too. Someone yeah. who usually doesn't do well in the open. Um, I liked your take on that. I liked that um, you said that. Yeah, people say the open doesn't matter, but for some it does. Some it really matters. You're trying to make this a professional sport for you, I'm sure, and the more noticed you get, the more opportunities are going to come for you to help to help you make this uh, your profession. Thank you so much, Matt. And you can hear his full interview this Monday, March 28th on the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends podcast. Catherine and Dave are now going to join us to share with us the new fantasy game they have for us for the quarterfinals. Hi, everybody. So it is Catherine and Dave here, and we are going to run through our quarterfinal box pick them boxes i guess dave's gonna select who he picked on each um of the boxes and i'm just gonna add my two cents as we go through all right so i guess before we dive in just quick synopsis of the game um so we got a bunch of different boxes here um you go through you pick your team um, pick one athlete from each box the score that they earn during quarter finals will be your team score and the team with the best score at the end of the weekend wins all right, starting with North American men one, we've got Justin Medeiros, Brent Fikowski, Patrick Vellner, Saxon Pancheck, and Jeffrey Adler. So I guess looking at the North American men, um, so looking back to last year, four of these guys finished in the top 10 for North American quarterfinals, with the only outlier being Fikowski. I think he was like 33rd or something like that last year. So um, when the chips are on the line to get to semifinals, these guys showed up to play. I think. Um, this one was kind of a bit harder for me. Um, historically, I've just gone Belner, kind of like a Canadian homer pick. Um, but I think this year I'm going to stick with Pancheck, coming off the open um, open victory, and then um, you know what he did last year. I think he was again fourth and fourth or so. So um, I like Pancheck to continue his hot streak. I think I'm going to go with Medeiros on this one. He's the champ. Got to s- stick with him. Okay. Box number two, North American men, Colton Burtons, Jason Hopper, 
Phil Toon, James Sprague, and Dallin Pepper, otherwise known as like Brute Strength and a couple other guys. A couple other guys, yeah. Um, you know, this one, again, another tough one to pick. I think all these guys were top 25 in the Open this year. Um, and again, looking back to last year, uh, I know Toon and Pepper really come to the limelight this year, but both of them finished top 50 in quarterfinals last year as well. So it wasn't a pure shock to see them at the top of the leaderboard. Um, Sprague would have been up there except for he had like a thousandth place finish in the front squat last year in quarterfinals, which really skewed it off. Um, I'd expect the strength component this year to be, have less of an impact because we didn't have the one rep max lift in the open. So, um, you're not going to get like the super strong athletes making it through just based off of one event. So my guess is with these top athletes, there'll be more compression, uh, at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to the strength component. Um, but with that, I'm taking Dallin Pepper. Um, I think just he is on the upswing. What scared me off of both Mertens and Hopper is both of them regressed between their open finish last year and their quarterfinal finish. So, um, you know, Hopper was 19th in the open last year, but was 35th or so in quarterfinals, which when you kind of think about the fields condensed and smaller, you kind of expect them to make that jump. So um, that kind of what pushed me to Pepper for this pick. Interesting. Yeah. Did not realize that that happened with Mertens and Hopper last year. I'm going to roll with Phil Toon. I just like him. He's a fave pick of mine. North American Women Box 1 is Haley Adams, Brooke Wells, Daniel Brandon, Bethany Shadburn, and Mallory O'Brien. Yeah, this one is no-brainer for me. Mallory O'Brien. Um, I'll take her second best crossfitter in the world at the moment. Um, so it'll be great to see kind of her competition with Tia throughout the season. Uh, other person I'm going to watch for is Brooke Wells. Uh, she showed us in the open that she's back um, just based off that elbow injury. Um, so she should be exciting to watch. And then, again, Haley Adams, always with the sneaky finishes, um, also had a top five in the open. I think she was third. But, um, yeah, so, again, a ton of talent coming out of the, the American group there. Yeah, this box was a tough one. My debate was between Brooke Wells and Mallory O'Brien, um, but probably just going to go Mallory O'Brien. She's clearly doing something well right now with that hard work pays off crew. And North American Women Box 2, we have Amanda Barnhart, Danny Spiegel, Ariel Lowen, Chrissy Ermo O'Connell, and Emma Carey. So I guess this one uh, is a bit tricky. Um, we saw Emma Carey kind of throw a, a wrench in everybody's kind of plans this year with her open finish, you know, finished third in the world after event one, but then just kind of had it a, a middle of the pack, like, um, well, not middle of the pack, but was it 9,000th or so, um, finish in 22.2, uh, came back with a 600th finish in 22.3, but again, just something just doesn't seem right. Um, hopefully she is okay. She did have that withdrawal from Dubai with a back injury, which seemed to hamper. So hoping it's she's okay, but to only have, you know, less than two weeks turnaround between open and quarterfinals, if there is something giving her problems, I don't know if that is going to be enough time to um, to recover. Um, but, you know, for me, I took Danny Spiegel. She finished second last year in Amer North American quarterfinals behind Barnhart. Um, but again, she had another super strong open finish for her. So, um, I'm going to take Spiegel out of this group. I found this one tough. I could flip-flop between Barnhart, Spiegel, Lone, and O'Connell all day. That is going to be an impulse decision whenever I set my lineup and when I change it five times before the cutoff. I, I don't know who who will be my pick out of those four. Yeah, because O'Connell was 10th and um, what was Lone? Yes, Lowen was 59th last year in quarterfinals. Um, so whatever. Yeah, three top 10 finishes in quarterfinals. Uh, oh, actually, Emma Carey was also top 10. So, you know, four of these five women finished top 10 in quarterfinals last year. So, um, I don't know. It's going to be a tough pick. And they're, they're all, I guess Spiegel is injured, but you got four top 20 games finishers here as well. So, I mean, like, so competitive. Yeah. So, it, it would be t fun to watch these uh, five compete head to head. Yeah, it'll be a good box to watch to definitely see how it shakes out. But that'll be 
that'll be a box that I flip flop on for a few days. The game is live at fantasyfitnessing.com. Just go in, sign up. It's free to play. Get your picks in. Send the link to your buddies so then you can talk about it and disagree on who picked who. And all the leaderboards um, is an overall. All the players are stacked up on one leaderboard. And if you put your affiliate in, there's an automatic affiliate leaderboard, as well as the capability to just make a league with you and your buddies. Yeah, so. so nothing beats bragging rights, uh, but we also do have some sunglasses here um, from our friends at Gooder for our podium finishers. So, um, you know, if you are lucky enough to finish in the top three on our worldwide leaderboard, we'll ship you off a pair of sunglasses just in time for the spring season. So there you go. That's the quarterfinal kickoff show. See you on the leaderboard. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dave and Catherine. Already have my team picked out and I'm ready to crush everyone. Let's now turn it over to Cat Shear, who has to get something off her chest. Took a loss, that's your loss. Yeah. Had to get my point across. Yeah. Heard them lasers talking now and we don't pay that no mind. Didn't need to watch them know that I'll be here in no time. Okay, guys, welcome back to another Cat's Rant. This really isn't a rant necessarily, but I wanted to talk about um, the house rules that I posted for my affiliate um, because some of the things that I made rules about are things that bug me. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So uh, I'm going to go through some of the things that are on the list and we can talk about it in the comments below and let me know what you think. Um, number one, arrive on time, right? Um, there's a saying, if you're on time, if you're early, you're on time. And if you're on time, you're late. Um, put a lot of effort into these classes. Um, everybody does their best to get here on time and we like to start on time. So please, please, please do your best to make sure you're here, you know, a couple minutes before class starts so that we can get started right away. If you do happen to be late, um, make sure you just come in quietly and try to catch up. Um, I'll make sure that I grab you and get you ready for what you need to be doing, um, but try not to make a scene. Uh, you will never have to do penalty burpees or anything like that. I don't believe in, um, you know, embarrassing people or making them feel stupid for being late. Um, chronic lateness will get probably a sidebar conversation from me. But other than that, um, accidents happen. Things happen. You get behind a big truck or, you know, you had to let out the dog when you didn't think you had to at four in the morning and you're late. That's fine. Not a big deal. But try to be on time. That's number one. Number two is appreciate the fact that you get to be here. Um, I think Ben Bergeron said it. He, I don't know if he got it from someone else or if it was his own thing, but it was not, I have to go work out. It's I get to work out. You know, I don't have to take my kids to school. I get to take my kids to school. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I get to go to the grocery store. There are people that are so less fortunate than us that don't even have the luxury of, you know, paying a fee to come to a place to work out um, and to work on their physical fitness. They just don't. So just be appreciative of the fact that you can do that, that you get to come here and then you get to work out. I really like that one. Um, number three, mind your coach. Uh, we had a discussion this morning at the 5, uh, 630 class. Somebody said, well, minding your coach and obeying your coach are two different things. I disagree. Minding is just a nice way of saying, listen to what I have to say. I have thousands of hours of coaching under my belt. Um, I didn't get a level three for nothing. I think I'm pretty good at cueing and seeing and correcting and all of that. Um, my classes are fun. So if I tell you to drop the weight because your technique, you know, could use a little work, you know, maybe drop the weight and work on your technique. I, I do know what I'm talking about most of the time. Um, so that's number three. Number four is wait for everyone to finish. Um, I can't believe I even have to make this a house rule. However, um, it does happen from time to time where people have to leave. Maybe they've got, you know, an important work meeting and they were only planning on coming to half the class anyway and they have to scoot out. Not a problem. Just let me know in advance and I will scoot you out and make sure I clean up your equipment for you. But for the most part, um, just wait for everyone to be finished. It's just kind of polite. You don't have to start cleaning up just yet. It doesn't take that long to clean up at the end of class most days anyway. Um, and I think people appreciate you don't have to stand there and cheer them on and make them feel dumb for being last or anything like that. Um, but just be respectful and, uh, you know, wait to clean up until everyone's finished. I think people appreciate that. Uh, what else do we have? Number five, channel your inner athlete. Um, I like to call everybody an athlete that comes through these doors. Um, whether you feel athletic or you've done a sport before, it doesn't really matter. If you're here um, and you're going to sweat with us, um, I am consider you an athlete. So think about that when you come through the door. Um, act athletic. 
Um, everybody's got an athlete inside of them, and it's our job to make sure that you feel that and appreciate that every day when you come. Uh, what else? Encourage others. That's a great one. Kind of goes along with the waiting until everyone's finished. Just make sure that you're encouraging and not putting anybody down. Um, stay humble is another one of our rules, obviously. Um, that's just kind of <laughs> to be a great person. You sort of need to stay humble. So we like that rule. Uh, what else do we have? Serve the community. Um, I'm a big fan of giving back when I can. Um, we've got a Phoenix group starting here, which is a sobriety class for fitness. Um, we plan to do a lot of other things for the community. We're just getting started with that. But I feel like if everybody walks out these doors and thinks about how they can better serve their community um, in any small way or large way, I think it's just going to make for a better place all over. So we like to serve the community for sure. Um, the last two, the last one, focus on your best effort. So focus, I like the fact that we're focusing on our effort. Focus on your effort, okay? Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Nobody really cares anyway. Um, focus on yourself. There's enough going on in class with thinking about counting reps and worrying about your form and making sure that you've got enough water and that you're not going to bump into somebody that, um, you know, sitting around and worrying about someone else and what they're doing and whether they're squatting below parallel or, you know, pushing out. That's my job. That's the coach's job to make sure everybody's working to standard. Um, just worry about yourself. Okay. So focus on your best effort. And last but not least, have fun. Um, I'm a big proponent of having a good time while you're here. Um, I feel like that's a, the reason why a lot of people come back is they have to want to come here. Working out is hard enough. And sometimes it gets in your head, you wake up and you're like, oh, I don't feel like working out. But if you know when you come here, you're going to have a good time. Uh, I think that's just the icing on the cake. So I want to make sure that everybody's coming here with an open mind and that they're willing to have a good time when they get here. Uh, so that's my rant. Those are my 10 rules, um, my house rules for the new gym, CrossFit Clarity. Um, it's also called Catalyst Fitness in case you're interested. And um, that'll do it for my rant for this week. And I rant. Took a loss, that's your loss. Had to get my pony cross. Heard them lasers talking that and we don't pay that no mind. Didn't need to watch and know that I'll be here in no time. Thanks, Kat. Poignant, fun, and entertaining as always. Well, that does it for this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notifier so you're the first to know when new episodes come out, and we'll see you next time on The Rig Report.